And then I'm curious, so, so you get arrested, right? You have no idea that anything you did gets out to the world. Yeah. You're put in solitary mm -hmm. confinement. What is that like? What is solitary confinement? Uh, it's boring. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, I often get asked, like, you know, well, what's solitary confinement like? And I'm like, well, you know, like, uh, go into your bathroom, take all this stuff out and close the door oh and then God. put a bed in there. And then that's your... Some people say that's torture. What would you say? To um, I'm careful with the word torture because, you know, for me, it has a very legal implication. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. it has very what about like cruel and unusual? I, th I think that it is, I, I think it is cruel punishment. I think it is... I, I think that it's, I mean, it's definitely not not unusual. Not sadly. unusual. It's yeah, very sadly, it's very typical. Yeah. There's sixty thousand people that, that deal with it every day. Wow. I think that it is unlaw. I, I think that according to international law, it is it is unlawful after fifteen days. I think that the practice should be banned. I I, I I'm skeptical of prisons in general, and I'm you know, and I never thought I would have this kind of position where I would be like a skeptic of prisons. But yeah. as somebody who's been through prison and seen the system, like I just don't see the value in it. It right? doesn't do anything. It doesn't really waste of no, money. No, it does. It does do something. It mm -hmm. controls. It controls large populations. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with individuals. Like mm -hmm. everybody talks about, like, oh well, this is about individual responsibility, right? But it's actually no. It's about collective sort of control of larger populations. That's why it's immigrant populations, and it, and this isn't even just the United States. This is like. It's like if you look at New Zealand, for instance, right? The native population in New Zealand, the native population in, in Canada are the are some of the highest, you know, have the, some of the highest incarceration rates. Mm. You know, it's people of color in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's immigrants mm -hmm. in the United States. You know, the carceral system like imprisons like people who, you know, who who like have who are in there for petty offenses and just can't pay pay their way out. Right. It's not it, the the intentionality of it is not it's not about individual responsibility it's not about crime it's not about any of these things rehabilitation it's about, it's about controlling a, an unwanted population i see that's the way i view it so you were in you were in solitary for how long i don't have the exact count off the top of my head but it was over a year i think altogether. <gasps> a year over a year what? not consecutively Shit. not oh. uh, consecutively was it was 11 months 11 what months yeah and so you're in, and so this, it's the size of oh a bath, God. just a bit big enough for a bed to fit. Yeah, and then it's 59 days of that. We're in a steel cage in Kuwait. <gasps> and so, a st do you have a bed in this steel cage? What is this? Yeah, there was cage? a mattress. There was a mattress, and anything else but a mattress. I don't remember. It was just remember it was sandy. It was really real. There was sand <laughs> in your in your cell. Well, yeah, because it was a tent. It was a tent with a cage inside of it. What? Was it hot it was as like fuck in there? Cage. Uh, the air conditioner sometimes didn't work. It was usually the ambient temperature. I would say was around 85 to 90 degrees. Just all the like time. Like Fahrenheit. That's uh, like 30, 30 to 40 degrees for your, all you Europeans out there. So it's a cage with a bed in it. Yes. And when and you say cage, there's no privacy. No, there's no privacy. Uh, I, the the entire time that I was in solitary confinement, I was being watched uh, uh, by at least two people. Wow. What and what doing? about like going potty? Yeah, just go for it. That's like prison life, though, because yeah. there's there's just in prison. Yeah. you just have a toilet. Is there a there's, toilet? Yeah, sometimes I forget to yeah. close the door before I go to the bathroom in my apartment, and whenever I have a friend over, they're like, "Oh, oh you're you're, love, you're used to that." Ah, oh, darn! I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Well, you kind of gloss over that, but it really seems like horrific. It's, it's I mean, it, I mean, it, almost it is a coping. year. It is. It is the way that I. It is a coping mechanism, mm. right? You know, it's it's just like it's just like you know, like I had this thing happen to me, and like mm. you know, my brain and my body are still trying to grapple with that. And, it, and the easiest way to do that is just like is just like chug on. Did you have books or something in there? Oh yeah, I read okay. thousands of books. Wow. Okay. I I I don't know the number, but it's at least a thousand books. Mm. Wow. Uh, I yeah I, yeah I I read a lot. I, I started with like classics too, like American classics and like historical classics and fiction, non and then like nonfiction. And I would keep up with like news and newspapers and stuff. I read a lot of periodicals because they were still printing things back then. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, I kept up with a lot of news and information and uh, and and reading a, a, an enormous amount of fictional lit literature. Did you learn to love reading or was it just like, I've always loved reading, but right. I I actually had time to do it and yeah. uh, and you know, I was able to for a while. Right. Yeah, my uh, prison is a prison was uh, definitely a time of still a time of learning and growth for me personally. What well, what was the food like when you're in a prison, a solitary cage in Kuwait? Can I be honest? so Kuwait was awful because, um, you know, it's field. 
It was like field stuff. It was the same so stuff we had in Iraq. Military um, food, yeah. Uh, uh, Quantico, where I was at for a period of time, for where I was there for nine months, it was a Marine Corps base. Uh, best food I've ever had. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Prison food? <laughs> uh, so <laughs> the weirdest, it's actually a weird fact because uh, their, op- their officer candidate school was right across the street. So it was like where the, all the officers become and, and become and they're sort you of cabinet shared and stuff. A cafeteria. We, we share the di- the oh, food. So it was like wow. fantastic food. Wow, that's <laughs> so, so we, interesting. Like, like okay, like it wasn't the best food I've ever had, but like the consistency of it being so good, mm-hmm. just uh, you know, it's like it's like having a it's like it's like having a three star restaurant food like every day. You're wow. Just like, wow. But uh, but yeah, then the, and then uh, the you know U.S. disciplinary barracks in Kansas um, and the the. You know, so prison system. The rest of the prison system was pretty typical, um, Sodexo type stuff. Your 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 uh, your standard, uh, um, you know, slop on a tray. Um, Got it. Macaroni and cheese, and maybe may, maybe maybe you know maybe chicken wings here and there. Like I've, I'm 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 trying to eat more plant plant based, but I. I have I have a really soft spot for for buffalo the, wings. The chicken wings. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who wings doesn't? Who huge, doesn't? It's a huge. Soft so spot. coming out of solitary for close to a year was it shocking for you? Yes, to get absolutely. out of that. I needed a recovery period. Oh um, my god! It took me months to be able to interact with people again. Because you didn't talk to anyone during that time, I would imagine. Or uh, yeah. So the pr- I, I I did interact with prison guards, um, but it was mostly just like deliver food. Uh, taking Brief. legal appointments, I yeah. inter- interact. I started to interact more and more with like, lawyers at the time, because mm-hmm. we were obviously trying to collect evidence and build a case and mm-hmm. try to defend ourselves, mm-hmm. and make our case to a court martial. Um, but yeah, like my my time was fairly isolated. And so, does com- time like become just a complete abstract thing, or? Yeah, I you know time. T- uh, I've I've learned to value time. I think that one of the most important things that I've learned uh, in my life experience for now is that I care far more about time than I do about money. Mm. Like if if it's a waste of time, like if you were if you told me that I was going to get a um, hundred million dollars, uh, but it was like going to take a huge chunk of my time away, I wouldn't change. I wouldn't exchange. I would want to do what I want to do with my time. Yeah. Um, I, I, I value time because, you know, m- m- like as, o- as awful as our sort of, you know, capitalist uh, money based uh, world and structure of society is um, and sort of the rat race of things is um, I've really learned the value of, of time uh, and how it, it, you know, we are slowly dying. Like we're all slowly dying over time uh, and, uh, and that time is valuable. And having that time taken away and then being given back to me mm-hmm. has just made me value every second so much more. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and I don't want to do things. And, I, you know, like I, I want when I when I spend time, especially with my best friend, um, you know, I, and, I, and we just watch anime or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she often asks me, like, why, like, why do you want to hang out with me and spend time with me? And I'm like, because this is what I care about. This is what I value. Mm-hmm. I value the time together. This is so important to me. Because I, you know, I, I wouldn't give this away for anything else. Mm-hmm. Because like we're, you know, yeah, like, and you got a second lease on life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I really have an understanding of how precious that time is, and how precious life is, and how precious, you know, relationships are too. Because the relationships that I had in prison were that very and learning how to like interact with people and have meaningful relationships with people was was so important. Um, 